Hello and welcome to the 8th of our lecture recaps for SEMA P3 Performance Strategy. OK, this lecture was on audit and review. First thing we wanted to look at was internal audit. So what are the rules of internal audit? Well, they monitor and report on internal controls. They assist with our accounting standard implementation. They ensure that our procedures are followed. And they liaise with the external auditor. Now they also ensure compliance with the OECD principles and we'll look at what those are later on when we look at corporate governance. But those are the rules of internal audit, the things that they're responsible for. How do they do this then? Well they undertake various different assignments and we'll look at some of those shortly. And they also report their findings to the audit committee. The key issue with internal audit is maintaining independence. Remember that internal audit is a department within a business, but they have to remain independent from other management so that they can conduct independent reviews. So they report to an independent committee, that being the audit committee hopefully. They have sufficient standing within the organisation, i.e. they're well respected. There should be a whistleblowing function in place so that they can report anything they find. They should watch out for self-review, that they're not reviewing the work that they themselves have done. The staff should be rotated to ensure that they don't keep doing the same job over and over and again can potentially lead to self-review threat. And you've got to ensure that they are sufficiently qualified to do the job. So that's a little bit about internal audit. What about outsourcing your internal audit department rather than having it as a, a department of your actual firm? Well, there are several advantages to this. You'll have specialised staff. You'll save on staff because you won't have to provide your own. It'll be immediately available. You won't have to take a year or so setting up your internal audit department. If you outsource it, it's immediately available. You can also take them on on a flexible contract. Better independence, I put a question mark there simply because if you outsource internal audit you also have the threat of losing your contract so again they may be reluctant to highlight problem areas. But they will have up to date methods and technology because they specialise in the area. Potential disadvantages of outsourcing internal audit then. Well if you're combining your internal audit and your external audit with the same firm is this a conflict of interest? As firms do talk about having Chinese walls and different departments doing different audits but at the end of the day it's the same firm and can lead to a conflict of interest. Again as I just said are they independent or are they more interested in their contract being renewed? Cost again even though you're outsourcing it may even cost more to do this than to have your own internal audit function the outsourced firm won't have the same understanding of the culture of the firm or the attitudes. The business may be reluctant to lose control of the internal audit function and it may blur the distinction between your internal audit and your external audit. So those are your disadvantages with outsourcing internal audit. How do these risks be minimised by the firm? Well, you've got to put performance measures in place to ensure that the internal audit is doing what you want it to do. You'll have quality reviews to ensure that the quality of internal audit is there. And you'll make sure that there's a clear scope, a clear reporting responsibility, and a clear line of authority with the internal audit. And you'll also make sure that you have separate internal audit and external audit functions. So that's in outsourcing internal audit. Let's look then in a little bit of detail at our internal audit assignments. Well the first one that you'll probably be familiar with from uh, previous studies is value for money audit. This looks at the three E's. Economy, what is something costing us? Efficiency, how well is it being performed? And effectiveness, how valuable or how well are the outputs produced. 
problems with this are measurement, how do you measure these three things, how do you define the objectives, and how do you maintain the quality of a value for money audit. So you're looking at the three E's, economy, efficiency, effectiveness, but how do you measure those things, how do you define your objectives, and how do you maintain your quality. So internal audit may also look at uh, an assignment on information technology. The sorts of things they'll ask are, are the controls in place over the in information technology section of the firm? Are they obtaining value for money? And a little bit about awarding of contracts. How are the IT contracts awarded? Is it a fair process? Is it a tender process? And is there any potential for fraud within it? They'll also undertake project auditing. Whenever the firm does a project, they'll maybe look at it and see, did it provide value for money? And they'll also look to see if there's any lessons being learnt from the undertaking of that project. Internal audit will also be con concerned with operational audits, i.e. how are the different functions within the firm operating. On procurement, they'll be interesting in whether the interested in whether the uh, purchasing function is effective. They may look at the marketing function and see, did they get value for money for the marketing? Were the objectives achieved? Is there any evidence of fraud within the marketing budget? And were the expenses recovered reasonable? The treasury function, a very, very important and very high risk function within a firm. It's very high risk, so you need strong internal controls and you've got to manage your currency risk, your interest rate risk, all of these things we will come to later on. HR is another function within the firm that Internal Audit will be interested in. Are they adhering to the firm's policies and procedures? So those are different Internal Audit assignments, but what is the difference between Internal and External Audit? Well, Internal Audit is not a legal requirement it's not required under statute. The management will appoint your internal auditors and they'll report to management. And what they do is they report on controls and systems. This is as opposed to external audit. External audit is a legal requirement for larger companies. The external auditor is appointed by shareholders. They make the report to the shareholders and that report is on the financial statements and they make an express opinion on the financial statements and that opinion will be whether the financial statements present a true and fair view. So that was our lecture on audit and review.